Hola y aloha, everyone. Welcome back to our show. We're the voice for the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, Hawaii. We have a great show for you today. Um, in honor of Black History Month, we're so excited. Our chambers are growing. Joining us today is Danielle Wills. She's the founder and Scarlett Diaz. She's the vice president of the Hawaii Black Chamber of Commerce. Welcome, ladies. Hello. Thank you for having us. <laughs> I, we're so glad to have you here. We're really excited. And like Barbara said, we're watching uh, different organizations in the community grow. And um, now that you guys are here, we want to hear all about it. Um, Danielle, if you could kind of kick it off, tell us about yourself. Um, you know, what inspired you to start the uh, Hawaii Black Chamber and your vision for it. So I'm going to let you take it away and share with us. Thank you. Thank you, Marcel. Uh, so. Danielle Wills, again, I am a serial entrepreneur. I've been in business for myself um, since I was 14. Started off teaching piano lessons and today founded uh, the Hawaii Black Chamber of Commerce. Uh, our Black community on island is growing and we're just full of entrepreneurs, full of creatives. And I really just wanted to create a space to encourage unity, to um, uplift us, to, to educate us and have a place where we can um, just really grow and not only not only grow, but for our businesses to thrive. Now, are there some like misconceptions maybe about the population of the black community here, right? Like what do most people think you said? Can you give us a little bit of stats maybe and uh, about the, the black community here in Hawaii? Yes, yes. So um, there is a black community in Hawaii, which is, which is a beautiful thing. You know, it's not the first thing people think um, when they're visiting or when even when I moved to Ireland. Um, there's some misconceptions that all of us are in the military and some of us are here just because of, of the aloha, because of the island, because it embraced us. And many of us, I'm finding more and more of us are here to stay and here to plant seeds and, and build businesses and have roots and raise our families here. We are coming up on 2% of the population, which, you know, it sounds small, but it's over 20,000 people. And wow. a lot of us are business owners. So um, I feel like it's it's something that may not be seen, but I'm hoping to change that and kind of bring us to the forefront, help us to help us to be seen and help us also just have access to resources. Um, you said something, sorry, I'm kind of hogging Barbara here, but, you know, you said oh. you're a serial entrepreneur and, you know, when I look at you and Scarlett and then here, you know, Barbara and I, it's like, oh, we're sisters. We have the, the same goals and, and, and we've gone down the same, you know, similar paths with, which, with certain desires and, and passions to, to, to grow our communities. Um, where did that really, I know our story and how we kind of came about, but it is a, endeavor it is not for the faint of heart it is a passion project i mean uh, can you kind of get into that because like what what gave you that idea there's other on island right to kind of bounce off of that there's organizations black organizations that are really um focused on the like social and cultural aspect of the black community right and like for us as and the hispanic chamber there are also hispanic uh organizations that are focused on the party and the culture and the scene and and we're trying to carve a niche right in the business side of 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 our community so can you talk a little bit maybe about that what you're trying to do different and how you you really got into that because it doesn't just happen I mean <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah that's interesting and um that's sorry and, and how did you guys you know on, to add on to that, how did you guys meet and come up with that? Because I know we haven't really introduced Scarlett yet. So whoever wants to take it the question <laughs> and run with it. Yeah, Scarlett, do you want, you can, you can do it a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah, so um, it actually started out of a conversation that Danielle and I had. Um, so Danielle also um, helps me with some entrepreneurial endeavors, but I am, I've spent most of my career on the corporate side. Um, I have my MBA from USC, woo woo, fight on. <laughs> and, um, and so we just in some of our conversations, I'm, I'm an ambassador for the state chamber, um, so Hawaii Chamber of Commerce. And uh, one thing I noticed was that I had met a lot of Black business owners in our communities, 
but we didn't have a space for it. And so, and I knew Danielle was a black business owner who's very successful and was already putting together events. Um, and so we had a great conversation about it. And to be honest, I kind of forgot about our conversation. <laughs> and then she reached out to me a few weeks later and was like, I have paperwork ready. I've talked to all the right people. We're going, like, we're ready to go. So um, so I, I think it's a good mix between both of us, um, just from not only our backgrounds um, being very different, but kind of a yin and yang where we work really well together. Um, but Danielle has a lot of experience and knowledge from her background also. And if you want to talk about that with the previous Chamber of Commerce is. Yeah, so I um, was on staff for the Colorado Black Chamber of Commerce. Um, for a couple of years, it was me and the executive director. And I just realized how, how helpful it was for the Black businesses in Colorado, um, especially during COVID. You know, it was a way that we got access to capital. Um, knowledge. I was able to do some business coaching through the chamber. And so coming here, you know, my first thought was just to look for one. And then again, through conversation with Scarlett, there was not one established already. And so um, I'm all about filling needs and little holes. And, and I was like, you know, it is a need. And I think it's something that a lot of us don't know how helpful a chamber can be. And like you guys touched on, um, my husband and I were event planners. So we know that there's a lot of people that go out and enjoy each other, enjoy the culture, have fun, but we need to feed our businesses as well. So same thing, right. hoping to fill, fill a niche in the business side for all the Black businesses on the island. That That's sounds like awesome. her story, right, Marisol? <laughs> yeah, yeah, we're like, she's a realtor and I'm a mortgage broker. And we're like, oh, how can we network in the community? Oh, let's reach out to the Hispanic chamber. And we're like, oh, oh. there is none. So I guess we're just going to start one. <laughs> yeah, that sounds familiar. Right? <laughs> yeah. if, there's, if there's no door, you build it. That's yeah. right. That's so, right. Here. So um, let's talk about, you know, uh, Black History Month. Tell us, you know, share any events that are going on on the island with us. Yeah. You know, Black History Month starts um, and it's my favorite month. Um, and so just a chance for us to celebrate culture in all different aspects. Uh, February 1st, tomorrow, the Honolulu. Um, African American Film Festival starts. Um, oh. So a lot of opportunity at the Honolulu Art Museum um, to see films, um, to reach out to the community and really support the art. Um, in addition to that, we are uh, sponsoring, we are endorsing a Black Heritage Festival that's going to happen on February 24. Um, and I guess our most exciting endeavor, uh, February 29th, is the leap year, a super special day we are going to be doing our ribbon cutting, our opening um, little pauhana, inviting other chambers, um, also people that might be interested in members to come out, have some poo-poos with us, talk story, meet meet us, meet me, meet Scarlett, um, and kind of really jumpstart our, our our programs here at the Hawaii Black Chamber of Commerce. Where is this um, event going to have yeah. take place? That's so exciting. Yes, thank you. This is going to be at the Waikele Country Club. Um, so it's going to be a really nice event, a really nice setting. Um, we're just hoping to see everyone there. It's going to be a Thursday night, so it'll be after work. Evening. Oh, you'll see us there supporting for sure. That's exciting. <laughs> we'll do one for our five-year, Barbara. We never, we never did one, so this is fun. We'll live vicariously through yours. <laughs> yes, we're celebrating our five-year this year, actually. <laughs> Well, let us know. We would love to come support you as well. Yes, yeah, so we might have to contact you guys for event planning. <laughs> yes. <That's great. laughs> um, yeah, so I was stalking your uh, Instagram page, <laughs> and I noticed that you guys did a community outreach recently. So what was that about? Tell it, share that with us. Yeah. Oh. Um, oh, go ahead. I'll share a little, and I'll, I'll let Scarlett add on there. Um, but it was just a way we wanted to start off giving back. And so we joined another organization, Love Right Now. Um, that's actually my husband and my event planning, and we wanted to do something uh, to get out into the community. And so it was, it was super excited to just get together for a good cause. Um, Scarlett, you can add on to that. Yeah. yeah um, we, it was fun because we made it a family event also. And so we yeah. were able, one of the things we want to focus on um, in the Black Chamber of Commerce is not only supporting our business owners, but also making sure that we're supporting our community, that we're engaged. And community is all of the ohana here, right? So um, we have a, on our website, it says together we thrive and we really believe in that. And so 
that means, you know, that means everybody. Um, and so the event was, it was great. It was a lot of fun. Um, we got to talk to a lot of people in the community, give out items to those who needed it. Um, and the children got to be part of it too, which I think is really important um, to start at a young age. Yeah. yeah, you start at a young age and then it just becomes part of like your lifestyle, right? They don't know yeah. any any different, which which is wonderful. And what was the name of the organization? And I'm sorry, could you t talk a little bit about what it's, what they're, I guess, I don't know if their mission, but what, you know, what they're about. Yeah. Um, I collaborate so with them. The company's called Love Right Now. Um, it's the company my husband and I started together and it's really just about love um, and about doing it in the present, you know, so whether that's through community events, just gathering people, we are gatherers. We love getting people together. We love letting people have good experiences. And so that message kind of it encompasses so much, right? Love encompasses so much. And so um, we do day parties, we do formal dances, feed the homeless. Um, and so um, so the community, the community event, the community service events is really the core of it because um, fun to get together, but it's really important to give back. And when we live on island like Hawaii, we want to make sure that, you know, we've been blessed here. We've been super blessed through the people. And so we're trying to make sure we give back. And so it was it was a really important event to to have as a first one that we endorsed as a chamber as well. That's great. Thank you. How, how do people find um, more information on where to, um, you know, your events or where to follow you? Uh, for Love Right Now, we are on Facebook and Instagram, Love Right Now HI. And then uh, for the Hawaii Black Chamber of Commerce, which is growing. We would love you for you guys to follow us and see a lot of the things that we're doing. It's H-I-B-L-K. And so you can find us on Instagram and Facebook as well. And LinkedIn. Oh, go ahead. And we're all at the same time. Go ahead, Marisa. <laughs> <laughs> no, I was gonna I, I was gonna ask um Danielle Scarlett, what have you guys what's the response that you're getting from from the black community? Do they are they aware yet that you're here? Is it, you know, is it kind of a soft opening or have you blown the doors open and what has been the feedback and response and support that you're getting? I would say people are excited. I don't think everyone knows yet. Right. Um, you know, we've both been kind of networking with people individually and um, and reaching out to as many people as we can. Uh, so far, the, the response is excitement, um, but also like trying to figure out what does the chamber do? So, uh, you know, we're going to have to be doing some educating and then we're welcoming everyone. We do have people waiting currently to become members, which is really wow. wonderful because it lets us know that um, that it's a need. Uh, and so we are super excited to kick off tomorrow and start welcoming members. That's so great. Oh. And what type of things have you thought about maybe what kind of uh, services or education that you want to um, offer uh, Black business owners here in Hawaii? Yeah, uh, that's a great question. So we definitely have thought of things. You know, we want to do networking meetups. We also want to do workshops um, and boot camps, whether it's virtual or in person for the education side. Um, on the other side of that, though, we want to see what the need is, right? Like, so I might be thinking people need to get together. They need to connect. They need to learn. And they might have some other holes. So we want to survey the members and really make sure that whatever programming we come up with is what they need. That's great, Danielle. Um, we just sent out a newsletter with a survey for our members as well, um, you know, trying to gauge what they're looking for this year. Are they looking for specific um, networking events within their industry or, you know, workforce development programs or, you know, just trying to figure out how we can better serve our community? Um, so, yes, that's very important. Um, so here we are five years later still trying to figure it out. I guess it's an ongoing process and, you know, continuing to grow. Um, I had a question for you guys. So we are the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and not the Latino Chamber of Commerce. Uh, we, we joined the United States Hispanic Chamber of Commerce, and therefore that's where we got the name Hawaii, Chamber of Commerce Hawaii. Um, my question to you is, uh, why is it the Black Chamber versus, you know, African American Chamber? Can you elaborate on that? It's a good question, yeah. Yeah, um, I wanted to make sure that as much as possible, we were including everyone that identifies as Black. Um, there's a little bit of a cap with labeling it the African-American Chamber of Commerce. Um, I myself am um, from the Caribbean, 
and I have a lot of friends on island that are here permanently that are directly from the Caribbean, still consider themselves just West Indians, but they identify as Black. So I did not want them to feel left out. Um, you know, there's people here straight from Africa, there's people here from Canada, Europe. Um, not all are American born and raised. Um, and so, yes, we are living in America, but I want to make it clear that all, all people identify as Black are welcome and that this is a space for everyone. Makes sense. <laughs> I know we, we should, we could even have a, a whole workshop on just what does it mean to be Latina versus Hispanic, right? Marisol. And depending on what country you come from, do they speak Spanish there? Is it, is it? In, no. Yeah. What, what type of the dialects, the, the food, the music, the dance. I mean, it's so rich in different cultures it's still a hispanic latino culture same you know when the black community there's different foods right different parts of the world so um you have a, a lot of uh, wonderful and exciting events and education that i foresee for the black chamber <laughs> yeah right yeah, yeah and it's, it's exciting that we're here to support each other because in some you know areas are communities even cross, right? We have Afro-Latinas and it's, it's going to be exciting to support each other. I think the most important thing is inclusivity. You know, we talk about that on our website and I, I said we talk about, you know, together we thrive and the more that we can make a space where everyone feels included and feels welcome and feels like they're represented, that's the most important part. And so, yeah, we're really excited not only to be here, but also to be, you know, hopefully having some partnerships with the Hispanic Chamber of Commerce and other groups on island this year um, to bring us all together. For sure. There, you know what? The chambers, you know, the communities will be like, who are what have who are these ladies? These chambers? <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Watch out. <laughs> Danielle, can I circle back uh, just kind of full circle to when we first started our our conversation? Um, you touched on that you're a serial entrepreneur. Um and from what I understand, there's a few things we might have, you know, left out. So if you don't mind elaborating <laughs> a little bit, I think one one thing you said, you're a, a piano instructor. Um, would you mind sharing a little bit more about, because listen, being an entrepreneur, again, it is not for the faint of heart. Like you have to have a, you're, you're a different kind of breed for sure. And <laughs> um, you have the other kind that are very corporate and structured and it's all fine. But can you share with us um, a little bit about your, your projects and, and ventures that you've uh, gone through? Definitely. Um, so my very first entrepreneurial journey started when I was 14. Um, I started teaching piano lessons to younger children in the neighborhood. Um, and then I started doing dance. And I feel like I had a unique experience because both my parents came to America, um, you know, looking for a better way. And they ended up making their way right from the Caribbean, from Trinidad, they ended up becoming entrepreneurs. So we saw them start businesses from nothing. You know, we saw them have all hands on deck from our aunties and uncles to cousins being the first employees working. And so um, my mom and my grandma and my dad always instilled in me, like, if you have a talent for something, if you're passionate about it, you can make a way. So they supported me 100%. I was 14, started teaching dance and piano, um, you know, went to school to be an educator um, and early childhood in the early childhood and then ended up opening up my own home daycare because I had children and I did not want to just send them off to school. So I had my own home daycare for 10 years. Wow. Um, once they were in school, that's when I just started, you know, kind of digging back into myself, like, what do I really like to do? And uh, the one thing I was passionate about, again, was entrepreneurship. So uh, I started, started dabbling in business coaching and then ended up working with two nonprofits that were focused on on teaching and helping um, helping Black women succeed in their businesses. And kind of the same thing, just seeing them not bootstrap, not struggle. Um, you know, parents, mothers, sometimes single, single parent families, and still realizing that you can be an entrepreneur, but you can have a village and you don't have to do it alone. Um, I, along the way, became a photographer. So that is kind of like my, my therapy. So it is something I do. It is a business, but it, it's something that actually is like my getaway and feeds me still. Um, and then I do a lot of things. <laughs> so I'm also a doula and a childbirth educator. And that comes back to, I'm a mom of five. So I've had some mixed birth experiences, some traumatic. Um, and, you know, unfortunately, some, 
I, I learned about some of the uh, the unfortunate circumstances that happens due to race in the maternal world. And so I was just like, I want to fill this need and help other moms in whatever way I can. And then, yeah. So, so those are, those are like, that's a little bit of a synopsis. I could talk for like hours about yeah. all the things. Um, but right now I am a photographer and an event planner and now I'm founder for the Hawaii Black Chamber of Commerce. Thanks for sharing. You definitely <laughs> are ready to take this role. Super on. mom. Yeah, it's not for the queen. <laughs> so um, let's, ta let's talk to um, Scarlett and Marisol and the fact that you both are USC alumni. Woo! Right on. <laughs> yeah, I, actually, I went to my undergrad, undergrad at USC and graduate school, but there was a long 10-year gap between the two graduations. <laughs> so a lot of things happened in there, a lot of different states and jobs and children, uh -huh. and <laughs> just life. And um, you told us that recently they uh, contacted you to do an article or a feature. Yes, the USC Young Alumni Association uh, just contacted me to do a feature um, as one of their successful alumni, which I, you know, I, I think we all have a little bit of imposter syndrome. Like, when do we when do we know that we're successful? <laughs> but um, but I, I do feel honored and humbled uh, to be able to do that, that small feature and um, and also hopefully get more involved in the USC community um, alumni community as well. Yes, it's so great to see two. USC women um, starting chambers here in Hawaii. That's that's a going to be a great piece. <laughs> yeah, that's a test. <laughs> I know when you you know when you put it that way, it's when you're in the thick of it. It doesn't feel like you're doing anything big, right, or magnanimous, like you were talking about that imposter syndrome. We actually had a guest at one of our um, uh, of our our podcasts, and it was amazing, specifically talking about that. So we just do the things, right? We're going with it. It doesn't feel like it's a big deal. But when you hear somebody else talk about it, you're like, oh, that's actually is yeah. kind of cool. <laughs> <laughs> we are doing things. <laughs> well, I'm excited to go to your ribbon cutting. Please, you know, I know you'll keep us posted and we'll, we'll share lots of great content about it. Um, is there anything else that you'd like to share before we, you know, end this program here? I think the one thing I want to share is just, you know, I think both of our chambers coming together is a really important thing because, you know, often the ethnic groups can kind of work in silos. And I feel like the beautiful thing is yeah. immediately after even meeting you guys, thank you for reaching out, connecting. Uh, I feel like we have a really beautiful thing and we can encourage just a lot of, a lot of working together, collaboration, cooperation, sharing of resources to kind of trickle down to all the business owners all the different groups here on island because we live in a place that's a melting pot and that's the beauty of it and and not only that it's a melting pot is of people but we can we can share all our resources and help make sure everyone um is doing what they love and and not struggling yes it, it is a, a beautiful thing and and the fact that we're a part of the hawaii chamber of commerce and they support us and you know we've been invited to meet with them next week is that's going to be exciting our chambers both of them and um, yeah. the fact that, you know, we have community members like Think Tech Hawaii supporting our our voice and giving us, you know, a, a voice in the community. Um, so thank you to um, Think Tech Hawaii for providing, providing us with the platform. Thank you, Danielle and Scarlett, for joining us today. Thank you, Marisol. And thank you to our listeners. And you can catch us in two more weeks. Um, adios and aloha. Aloha. Aloha.